Hello, my fifth graders. Did you think you weren't gonna see me? Oh my goodness, get out of here. Of course you're gonna see me every week for art because I'm going to be doing a video just for you with a weekly art project, just like we do normally in art class. You got it? Okay. Do you know where I'm sitting right now? Anybody? I'm sitting in my front yard and it's cold. It's like 40 degrees, I'm sitting on the ground. But I'm doing it just for you because I love you. The reason I'm doing it is because I would like to look at something that's growing in my front garden. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. Well, you'll find out in a moment. Hold on. Hey, back again. So, does anyone recognize what this spring flower is? Anybody? Come on. They are popping up in my garden. Do you see them? I got some purple ones over there, but... I'm talking about the ones that have the great big leaves popping out of the ground. Does anyone know what those are? You might have some in your garden. Well, they are actually tulips. And I absolutely 100% love tulips. They're like my favorite flower. And I love that there are over 150 species and 3,000 different varieties. They are just the coolest flowers to me because they are symmetrical, which means that, well, you tell me what symmetrical means. Does anybody remember? It means whatever you see on one side, you're going to see the same thing on the other side, like a butterfly. But anyhow, you can find tulips in almost any color, and these colors have different meanings, like red symbolizes love, true love and purple represents loyalty and white tulips mean i'm sorry so if you ever get in the dog house with someone you might want to give them a white tulip um, they're perennials which means that they bloom every spring and when they grow they bend to reach the sunlight so it's kind of cool to see how they move around during the day in your yard but they are native to central asia uh, but they didn't become popular until they reached the netherlands and the Netherlands is now the world's largest producer of tulips. And I'm especially excited about my tulips this year because I was actually in the Netherlands this past summer when I was in going to Prague to um, see my nephew get married. But I actually bought bags of tulip bulbs to plant in my yard so I could always remember my nephew's beautiful wedding. And so I planted all these bulbs last fall and they are beginning to pop up. So I am really excited. But you know what? Most importantly, the reason I am talking about tulips is because, oh, kind of reminds me of what's going on right now. You know, in nature, life begins all over again in spring. And you know what? I know life seems a little confusing right now and disappointing because I know you have so many things that you had planned on doing and maybe you can't do it right now. But listen, I promise, just like these tulips sprouting, our lives will sprout again, just like the tulip, and we will find beauty and happiness in our days. I promise. So... The tulip's not all the way up yet. We're waiting, and we kind of have to wait too. So let's be patient, and we will find the beauty again. All right? All right. So let's get inside, and I need you to get a pencil, a piece of paper. Uh, printing paper works perfectly. Copying paper, white. And if you have crayons or markers or watercolor paints, that would be terrific too. Okay, so I'll see you in a few, my little love bugs, my little tulips. Well, welcome to class. These are my two fish students named Randall and Marlon. And they say, hello, how you doing? Are you Jennifer's students? Well, welcome to the kitchen art class. We're delighted to have you. All right, let's get started, Randall and Marlon. Let's go, let's make some art, okay? Okay. Hey. Okay, I want you to look at this beautiful flower arrangement that I put together. I got the 
tulips at the grocery store. When they start selling these at the grocery store, oh my goodness, it is like impossible for me to push the cart past it. Like I just have to grab a bunch of flowers. I have to. It's spring. They only come out one time a year and I have to have tulips in my house. So I chose pink ones this week. I want you to look at the bud. Look at the petals. You see them? They're actually symmetrical. There's actually six petals on a tulip. We probably won't be showing all six when we draw them, but I want you to pay attention to the curly long leaves. This is the part of the flower that's not symmetrical because let me tell you, these leaves have a mind of their own. They bend and they twirl in any direction they want to. But one thing I want you to notice is how long and skinny they are and how pointy they are at the end. Another thing that I think is exciting, I bought this when I was in the um, Amsterdam. Isn't this cool? It is a wooden tulip. Isn't it beautiful? I'll bring it to school and put it on my desk so you can see it. So um, we are going to actually be working with this flower arrangement. I did take some stills that are in this video and I want you to stop the video and then you'll use that as your still life um, uh, drawing. You'll look at that when you draw your still life, okay? So I will be with you in a moment. Hey, welcome back. All right, we are going to work on a simple tulip drawing um, so you can become accustomed to the basic shape. Now, when you do your still life, I want you to look at what you see and try to draw what you see. And what is a still life? A still life is something that's setting on a table and it could be some bottles, it could be some uh, flowers, it could be some fruit, and you draw what you see. So to begin the basic tulip shape, you are going to draw a flower bud, which is curved at the bottom, sort of like a letter U. And then from one end of the flower bud, you need to draw a curved line from the end to the inside of the bud, okay? And then the third step, you need to join the other end of the bud to the line that you drew. Draw a curved line halfway down from the flower bud line so you have your two main petal parts. For the third petal, you are going to draw a curved shape that goes up from one end and then down to the other petal, and it will be pointed too. So actually, you know, we talked about there were six petals, and if you wanted to show smaller ones in between, you could do that as well. Now you are going to draw the stem, which is long and curved. And I'm gonna tell you that the tulip stems are a little bit thicker and they get than the normal flower, and then they get thicker towards the bottom. And then we talked about, you remember we talked about these crazy long um, leaves that have sort of minds of their own. You just kind of draw up a wavy line, but make sure it's pointed at the end. Wavy line, and some might pop over, and you can make it look wavy, yeah. And so here we have the simple tulip shape. I want you to practice this. I do have some stills of how to draw a tulip step by step. You can look at those. Why don't you practice drawing those on the back of this paper? Two, four, or five different practice drawings before we start our still life, okay? Have fun. Okay, so I'm gonna do my demonstration of the still life. 
And what you will do is you will start with the vase. Now draw a light until you get it just right. And I'm going to do the vase without the tulips in it. It's gonna curve in and then out. And here's my round bottom, okay? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of look at my still life and figure out where the tulips are. And I'm gonna draw some of these little round shapes to show me where I'm going to be drawing the tulip flowers, okay? And then that gives me an idea of where I'm gonna place them, okay? Remember to use all the paper, da bega da bada. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start looking at each tulip and I'm using that round shape to sort of guide me. And I will begin to try to draw what I see, okay? Here's a stem, here's another one that is growing this way. Why do you think some of these have been moving or bending this way? Well, it's because that's where the sun was coming from. And so you are going to draw what you see. If you have a, a flower that is sticking off from the edge, then you are going to draw that flower if it's coming way off of the face and not with the rest of them. Okay, draw what you see. And also the leaves, what you're gonna do after you fill in each of the tulips is you add your stems and then you can begin to add the leaves that might fall over. Now you can erase the lines where you see the, where you don't see the vase. This one kind of comes up here. And then we have some that are folded down. And you're gonna hide some of your flower stems. And we've got more that come here, and this one comes up behind. And you'll see there are a ton of leaves on this flower arrangement. So you really need to fill the arrangement up with the flower leaves. Okay, I'll see you in a second. Have fun drawing. So I've selected some crayons that I thought were good for the still life. I've got my greens, some browns, um, some purples, and some whites. And if you look at the still, you'll see, I think that's a pretty good selection. So when you look at the flower, you're going to notice that there are some darker parts of the flower, and then there's some lighter parts. What I like to do is I'm going to add a little bit of pink to the bottom of the flower petal and maybe just a little at the edges. And then um, I am going to round it and some parts I'm gonna press really hard and then I'm gonna get a little bit lighter and lighter and lighter, okay? And I'm gonna take some pink and I'm gonna overlap it. All right, you know, your crayons can work a little bit like oil pastels too. Here's my dark side and I'm gonna outline it. Maybe I'll add a little darkness in here and then sort of move the color around with my pink crayon. And I'm gonna make the insides pink and then maybe add just a little darker tip, okay? So there's one tulip that is flower that is done. Now the stem is green, of course, so I'm gonna add a lot of green, but I'm also going to overlap my greens because I like to use different colors, mix them. And for the leaf, I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna outline it, and I'm gonna color it lightly, but I'm also gonna add some other greens to give it some depth. Using just one color crayon is boring. We don't wanna be boring, do we? Hey, Randall Marlin, how are you doing on your flowers? Woo! 
are doing very well, Jennifer. We really enjoy this project. Well, I'm glad you do, Marlon and Randall. We would love to come to West Side Montessori with you. Will you please take us so you can have fish in your room? Well, I don't know, Marlon and Randall. I think Rocco and Roman might be a little bit upset if I take you. So you can see that I've got the different greens. I want you to fill up your still life and finish your flowers with the different greens. If you want to show a shadow, um, you can take a little bit of brown on one side if you see a, sh a leaf that has a little bit of a shadow. And you can just add a little bit of brown and then go over it. Oops, get over here, pencil, and blend it in, and you'll have a shadow. Maybe you want a shadow on the side of the stem. Okay, how are you going to do the vase? Well, we see some of the stems in the vase and they sort of cross over each other and they go down and some are shorter. So you can see how I use the dark crayon. I'm gonna use a little bit of brown in there. Okay. Because we wanna be able to see the stem in the water. Okay, let's use another green. Okay. And then the color of the vase is actually a darker green, sort of similar to the color of the leaves of the tulips. Oops, let's bring that over. So I'm gonna color that in. Okay. And now I'm gonna go this way to give it a nice cylinder look. Okay, you can go over your leaves that you colored. So going back and forth gives it that rounded look and look you want to make some parts of it darker go ahead because you'll see that part of the glass is darker okay maybe there's a little shadow underneath there okay so we have our glass and then the bottom of it is actually clear so I'm gonna go around with my white 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 and you'll see what we'll do with that if you don't have watercolors then what you can do is use a lighter color to go around it and we also want to set our still life on a table so you're not going to go at the very bottom we want to show that there's some depth so i am going to show a line going across now my still life was on a mirrored table if you want to show the reflection of it on the table of the mirror you could go ahead and do that okay that's up to you um, but I am going to, let's see here. I think I'm going to use actually both. And let's use, no, I'm going to stay, stick with pink. I'm going to pretend that it is on a pink tablecloth. So I am going to color my tablecloth in. And remember, you can be creative when you do this. It's your work of art. Okay. I'm gonna add kind of the same colors I did with the flowers. All right. Okay. And I'll see you in a second. So finish your flowers, your leaves, your stems, your vase, and your table. I'll see you in a second. Have fun. Hey, welcome back. So you can see how I went in and I used all the different greens, overlapping different greens and um, I have it painted by background. Um, one thing that I forgot to do was to erase some of my pencil lines, so if you can do that, go ahead. Now, you can stop right here and call it a day if you're happy, or if you have some watercolor paints and you would like to add a background. Oh, this brush was dirty. Oh, I didn't clean it well before I left last art project so I'm actually gonna use these paints I like the color better so I'm gonna go in oop that's a little goopy so let's put a little more paint in there and move it around and I am actually going to paint uh, my background yellow because I think yellow is a happy color and I think it looks really lovely against the green so if you want to go ahead and you've got watercolors at home, 
go ahead and paint your background. Or if you would like to color it with crayon or marker, you could go ahead and do that as well. Okay, I'll see you in a second. Okay, so you can see that I'm done painting the background. And there's one last thing that I did not do. Huh, can anyone tell me what I did not do? What is the rule when we finish our artwork? What is the thing I make you do on the front? Come on, I know you remember. Oh, you're right. You must sign it. So I'm going to give it my fancy Jennifer Art Hand writing. There's my signature. Write your signature, please. Now, when this is dry, I want you to take it down and I want you to hang it someplace in your house. And I want it to be a reminder that you are like a tulip bulb. And right now, you're in the ground, you have gone through a very hard winter, but you're beginning to bloom. And as the days go on and they get warmer and the weeks pass by, you will grow and you will grow. And all of a sudden, Spring will be here and you are gonna bloom into a beautiful flower and you won't be stuck in your house anymore and we'll get outside and we will have beauty in our life. All right? Hey, love bugs. I had fun, did you? I'll see you next week.